All right, we are back home. I am um, ready to get this thing unloaded and onto the lift. I need to go through this car. It has been taking a beating. It has um, held its own, hardly really even skips a beat. Been freaking great. What a trooper, what a good unit. But um, it deserves some TLC and um, I think we should give that to it. Um, definitely needs some fluids changed. 1000% needs the oil changed. I need to go through and figure out where my CO2 leak is. Yada, yada, yada. This, if you saw in the video, shakes way too much. Need to figure out something with that. Some kind of way to brace this thing because it is super wobbly, but some TLC is required. And then um, we can get back to racing this thing. But, you know, I feel like after a long race, I need a break this thing i feel like it needs a break and it's just tired right now like it is just very very tired engine and trans seem healthy and happy but like i don't know there's like this emotional tiredness that i feel like it's getting it's probably just me being crazy because cars obviously don't have an emotional tiredness but like man, this car pretty well connected i feel like it has a mental drain if that makes sense that just needs to be like refreshed with some with some TLC and some uh, some love. I mean, it's in, in the word TLC already, but it's just how I feel. Like, I don't know. Like, there's no, it's not a quantifiable thing. You can't just like, you can't just like test that, you know? You can't just like, it's not a compression issue or something along those lines. It's not a quantifiable thing. It's just tired. It is just a tired car right now and it just needs to be less tired. So let's get to it. I'm gonna unload this thing. Put it on the lift here. Sorry, Mustang, you almost went on the lift. You almost went up there, but not today, bud. The car's up on the lift. This is exactly how I know that the uh, transmission was, um, I guess, like kind of slipping, really just blowing through the converter is, this is the overflow that is um, very filled at this moment. A lot of dripping down there, but um, I didn't have this the last time that there was a fire, so there was no overflow, so the pressure came out um, on the dipstick side. I learned, now I have an overflow and it's got some burnt fluid in it, but works good, this little overflow. So if the EPA ever comes at me for my cars and they come at me for the emissions, they're coming at me for the wrong thing. They should come at me for the amount of fluids that I use. I use more oil by just draining the catch can and changing oil than I probably ever put into the environment. And then I bury it in the backyard too, so. Catch can drain, um, other catch can drain, oil drain, converter bolts tight, and kind of just uh, check over the rest of it and rewire this. So I only had these little spade connectors. That was all I had. And they're very poorly crimped and stuff. So I gotta fix that. That's the ground and then power. The solenoid up there is pretty nice because it's either, either or, it's like a, like like a sensor like this where it doesn't matter which one is which power or ground so makes it pretty nice oh, oh man i freaking love to see that there is not a speck of metallic or anything in here not a single thing this induction performance fast forward race engine is as happy as the day we put it in there. I am pumped about that. That is a good sign. It's always um, a little scary. You never know what you're gonna find, especially with how hard we've been running it and how much we've been running it. Um, I have, I did two oil changes without changing this filter just to try to get as much, just to try to get like a little bit more data from it, I guess you could say, but um, I wanted to see what it would look like after two like drain and fills and it looks awesome so put a fresh filter on it this is like the fourth filter i've had on this motor already but fresh filter fresh oil keep on going all right well just leaving srq performance parts you guys know these guys over here have been filling up my nitrous bottles since day one on the camaro and we are ready to go race tomorrow night so we kind of last minute decided. There you go, SRQ Performance Parts. Guys, they are freaking awesome. If you need any nitrous or random miscellaneous little parts and stuff down in Sarasota, Bradenton, these guys are freaking awesome. So 
would definitely recommend. Go check them out. Very cool stuff. Um, but we decided last minute to go race at Cletus's deal. He's doing a little uh, streetcar shootout type of situation. And um, I have a streetcar and I've done some shootouts. And uh, Bronte was hounding me. I was like, uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. I was like, uh, I just spent all last weekend racing. I'm tired. Uh, let me take a weekend off. But it is just Friday night. So decided to uh, load up the car for Friday night and uh, go out to Rainton and see what we can do in this streetcar shootout. So let's hit it. All right, so next up um, on my prep for this deal, uh, dump valve is out. I need to rewire it because I didn't like these connectors that I used on there. That was a last minute deal and not a huge fan of them. So going to undo these. And then I also got uh, this feller here. Did I get the wrong size? I kind of just guessed. I don't even remember when I was ordering them, but knowing me, I probably ordered the wrong size. Nope. Yeah, I thought it was dash eight. Um, so then I ordered two dash eight plugs and I can keep these with me now. So if the dump valve does fail, I can at least, um, you know, block it off because Obviously the dump valve helps a lot for spooling the car. That's what we use it for. It gets up onto the brake. Then when I let off the button, yada, 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 you guys know. Um, but I am like 99.99% .99 sure we will have no problem getting up onto the brake without the dump valve. So if I have to pull it out, I can do that. Um, next test session that I have, that's not like an event like this coming Friday, tomorrow. Um, I am going to try no dump valve because me and Alpha were talking about it and we want to try no dump valve. It simplifies some things, it takes some weight off, and it just um, it just makes everything simpler. You know, if you don't have another mechanical piece that has to open and close to fail, your car is simpler. And I want to try, maybe, maybe it'll help us on our 60 foot. I think it'll help the first initial rollout because when you let off the button, it does take a second for converter pressure to kind of flood back in. So, you know, obviously not a second, we're talking milliseconds here. I don't have a regulator, I don't have a sensor, so I don't really know, but like, in my mind, pressure does take a second to, like, there is time, there's a time delay, there has to be, but maybe I'm wrong. But, um, time to fix this guy up and put this thing back in, rewire it, uh, put some fresh trans fluid in because it was a little burnt, so I drained out most of it. Um, most of it drained into that pan. Um, I was doing something in the engine bay. I was looking for leaks in the CO2 because um, somehow we keep running out of CO2. I'm either leaning that it's either the diaphragms that I kind of already know are a little bad or it's the um, something in the parachute launcher. So one or the other, but thankfully I can fill up CO2 bottles pretty quick at the track so that does not worry me too much, but I would like to figure it out obviously. And I am looking at switching from CO2 to nitrous to where my one nitrous bottle um, holds. My one nitrous bottle does the parachute, nitrous, and the boost controller all in one. And then I can simplify the system by taking out the CO2 bottle, a whole nother regulator, kind of all that stuff, the bracket and everything, just easy. And then when I go to use it, it's just one valve, turn it on and everything's armed instead of two different, turn it on, trying to just make it as simple as possible. And that should help, so. Uh, go up with the car, get to it, and uh, keep on doing it. So I rewired the trans brake dump valve and the bump box set up here. It all kind of goes into here, connects to these connectors, and then it's set up to where I can just unplug this connector, and then the dump valve won't work, but the trans brake will still work, so we can test it, and we can uh, block it off without having to change up any wiring. Makes it nice and simple. So just um, kind of trying to keep it as simple as possible here and go from there. So time to uh, button this thing back up. I gotta put the dump valve kind of back in all the way. It was just kind of in there for mock-up for wiring and then um, lower it down. Oh, I gotta put the belly pan back on. It has fresh oil in it. Need some more transmission fluid now and then we're good to go. All right, so this trans brake has been wired and changed a couple times now, the, all this wiring here, and I'm happy to say that this is the nicest I've had it. Easiest to use, simple. I even have a little uh, 
can like a little holder right here, a little eyelet, whatever they call them, the Adele clamp or not, not an Adele clamp, um, a little D clamp, P clamp, whatever you call that. Um, looks nice though. Now it's finally in a good spot, so should work good. I already tested it. I already climbed up on my ladder and clicked the bump button or the trans brake button and I heard it all clicking. So that means we're good to go. So now just um, top of all the fluids, put my, put my belly pan on and we're good to go. Chickens, get out of here, dude. All right, filling up the transmission fluid here. Uh, it goes down right there. And just making sure that she's topped off. I don't have that much left, I only, I wish I had some more like single quart deals because I just have the big one, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so this is what I've been doing right here. Um, so troubleshooting, you guys know I've had a little CO2 leak of some kind and this is the uh, fix for it that I found. So I have my little air chuck here and then I have um, NPT uh, push lock fittings that can connect to the only two fittings that come off of the bottle. So um, trying to figure out which fittings are leaking. And I think I've come to the conclusion that it's this one right here. So that one is for the parachute launcher. This is the parachute launcher right here. And it's holding air, but when I come up here and I kind of like push it a little bit like that, you can, you can hear it coming out of there. I was using a little bit of um, just alcohol spray all around. I didn't want to use soap spray because it makes a mess um, and I didn't have any. So I just used some like alcohol spray. So it dries quickly and you can still see it like kind of blowing the air. It's, it's like a mist. So when you spray it, you can see it blow almost instantly. So pretty nice, but um, just use these and then pressurize the air and then it holds pressure, which is cool. And then once you unclick this, you can release the pressure like this. So you can hold the pressure and then release the pressure. Pretty convenient. So I think what I've come to the conclusion of is these fittings need to be freshly um, thread sealed and then that fitting needs to be replaced. So not too bad, shouldn't be too long of a, shouldn't be a bad fix at all. So I'm gonna get to that and then make sure that this night, make sure that this CO2 bottle is filled. Hopefully this fixes our issue. Today is race day. Time to get the car loaded up. Time to get the truck loaded up, charge some scooters. We leave soon. All right, well, that was just a quick little update video on getting this thing ready. Uh, you guys should come out tonight. Uh, little street car shootout, testing. I think the burnout cars are running, uh, some of those burnout guys, but that's gonna do it, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep it saucy. I'll see you next time.